And we are live. Uh, I'm going to wait for a couple of people to jump in here. I didn't start the show like I normally did for a particular reason. A uh, couple of things to talk about before we get going this evening. If you are in the chat, if you can do me a favor and just hit the number one to let me know that you can hear what I'm saying, that would be uh, appreciated. <coughs> Excuse me. I'm not expecting a large crowd tonight, obviously. Uh, this is one of those subjects that uh, I think some people are going to be cool with. Uh, some people aren't going to be cool with. Uh, so, okay, Harry, <laughs> you're the only one in the chat. <laughs> we got three people tonight. This is fantastic. Uh, anyway, uh, tonight's show is going to be uh, about Bob Lazar. Uh, if you follow the UFO stuff, or you're into aliens, this is going to be the show for you. And the format for tonight uh, is going to be very basic. Uh, we are going to play about a 45-minute podcast, which we've already uh, recorded. Uh, and then we will come back into the chat. And if people want to talk about it, we can. If nobody shows up, then at least we did our show. Uh, before I get started, however, uh, there is one kind of thing that... Uh, yeah, a lot of people are not getting notifications at all for some reason. I don't know why. Uh, it's just the way YouTube works. Uh, I wanted to take a moment before we begin, even though this is a horror podcast. Uh, I just wanted to wish my buddy, uh, Sonny, a very happy birthday. Uh, I continuously busted his balls uh, about this shirt. I says, only you can get picked up. <laughs> and an FBI photo wearing basketball never stops. <laughs> anyway, it's Sonny's birthday today. I love him. Uh, he knows it. Uh, he's one of my best friends, and uh, I can't wait till he uh, gets home. Uh, but I wanted to wish him a happy birthday. I'm sure it's not the greatest birthday sitting in the can, uh, but we got you back, Sonny. We always will. We love you, and we will see you soon. So, uh, I just wanted to put that out there. Uh, additionally, let me see what else we have here. Uh, yeah, so if you're just arriving, we have 20 in, so fuck it. Uh, if you're arriving, tonight we are talking about the one and only Bob Lazar. And after the podcast, we are inviting all of you to come on and talk about it if you want. And if not, we'll call it a night. But, uh, we're going to go ahead and start the podcast now. Uh, there is a lot of information that is contained in this, and there's also some videos, and then there are one or two things I want to show you afterwards, which I could not include uh, in the video. So we're going to go ahead and start. I will be in the chat at the, uh, the whole entire time, uh, and I hope you guys enjoy. Your blood is red. The window was open. I'm under a bed. Welcome to Tales of the Night Horror Podcast. Your host, Jeff Canarsi. wanted to start a podcast that way i don't know what it is and i guess it's fitting for today because we are talking about bob lazar um and so if you don't know who bob lazar is you should uh, regardless of your position on aliens alien spacecraft conspiracy theories what we know certainly uh, is that bob lazar came forward in 1989 and changed the way the country and the world looks at ufos at least to some extent the problem with Bob Lazar, uh, conspiracies notwithstanding, 
is that his background, his degrees, his statement on his his statements publicly, at least on his education, they all fail the litmus test. In other words, his background doesn't exist in the framework of what's provable and what's become more of a conspiracy page turning book. Where Bob Lazar enters this genre, albeit aliens uh, and spacecrafts, begins in 1989. In 1989, Bob approached KLAS TV in Nevada and went by the moniker Dennis. And he explained that the United States military was conducting covert research on alien technology in the Nevada desert at a base that we know is adjacent to Area 51. Uh, He went on to claim that this was called S-4 and that the military was working on the UFOs and anti-gravity technology. Uh, in the interview in 1989 with George Knapp, Lazar would claim that he helped reverse engineer an alien spacecraft at a secret base, which he called S-4, near Papoose Lake. Uh, what we have to ask is what credentials does one have to have to even work in a field like that? Secondary to that, how did Bob even apply for a job like that? Uh, surely one would have to not only have a clean background record, but you would also have to be the top of the top educationally uh, to get something like that in the terms or at least in in sort of the framework of the way he's explained it. Uh, and that's where the Bob Lazar story really gets odd. If you look into Bob Lazar's background, uh, he wasn't very special at all, to be honest with you. Uh, he would go to high school and was the bottom third of his class, not a stellar student, not a brain scientist. Uh, and he was not really somebody that excelled particularly well at anything. After high school, he would attend Pierce Junior College in Los Angeles, California, uh, a normal average guy. So in 1989, when he began a series of interviews with George Knapp, he set the world on fire with his alien stories. And as we said, his claims about working at S4, which we know is adjacent to Area 51, were scoffed at at the time. Everybody thought the guy was a fucking lunatic. Keep in mind, this was prior to the public really knowing that Area 51 was a specific military base and and not a lot of people knew what went on there. So there was already these little conspiracy theories floating around. He claimed that this S4 installation was south of Area 51 at Groom Lake. He claims that on the site there were airplane hangars built into the mountainside. He said his job specifically was to help reverse engineer one of nine flying saucers, which he said were extraterrestrial in origin. uh, He would give detailed information claiming that the sporty sports craft was made of a metallic substance that felt and appeared to be like liquid titanium. In November of that same year, he would unmask himself on television with George Knapp and use his real name. He would further make claims that he attained the job through EG&G, which was a subcontractor whose employer was the United States Navy. Lazar would go on to claim that the craft he worked on ran on antimatter reactors, which was fueled by a chemical element with the atomic number 115, which at the time was uh, called an umpentium, which hadn't even been artificially created at that time. It wouldn't be made until actually 2003 artificially. He would claim that the propulsion system for these crafts, or specifically the one that he worked on, relied on a stable isotope of element 115, which generated a gravity wave that allowed a vehicle to fly and evade visual detection by bending light around it. So let's look at this first interview. Sci-fi technology does not exist. Gravity propulsion system... The propulsion system is an, uh, a gravity propulsion system. The power source is an antimatter reactor. Uh, this technology does not exist at all. The claim sounded like Hollywood sci-fi. Months later, when his identity was revealed, Bob Lazar said he worked at a secret facility near Groom Lake where alien technology was being reverse engineered, that is, taken apart to figure out how it worked and whether the Pentagon could duplicate it. This is the simple drawing he made at the time. Here now I had access and was permitted to view and look at the operation of this main level with the gravity amplifiers and the level below. The premise seems less preposterous now. In a new documentary about Lazar, he describes in detail the spacecraft he worked on 30 years ago. The craft 
that I worked on, that when it's when it's going to travel a long distance, that is how it operates. It flies along and it, it puts its belly to the target and then brings all the amplifiers to power and, you know, it shoots off in that direction. It doesn't fly as it would in a science fiction movie. It flies with the belly, the bottom forward. If the description of a spacecraft tilting sounds familiar, take a look at the so-called gimbal UFO, a video released by the Pentagon in 2017. Naval pilots encountered a fleet of these unknown craft off the coast of Florida in 2015 and have since had dozens of similar encounters. The spike in UFO incidents prompted a recent policy change by the Navy, which announced it wants to encourage its pilots to report future incidents. Pentagon officials reluctantly admitted to the New York Times 17 months ago that the military has secretly studied UFO incidents, in part so it might figure out the technology. In the gimbal video, there's a mechanistic turn against the wind without deceleration. So we have a craft without rotors, without heat signatures, without plumes, without tail fins, and certainly no tail number, moving in a way that is counterintuitive to our own aeronautics. When Bob saw that, he came to the conclusion, this has to be a gravity-propelled craft. It's rotated. That it does mimic exactly the propulsion system that Bob Lazar described. This story is extraordinary. Jeremy Corbell directed the Lazar documentary, but he also broke the story about another now famous UFO incident, the 2004 Tic Tac encounter. The Navy pilot who engaged the Tic Tac, Black Aces commander Dave Fravor, has said he doesn't believe the astonishing craft was made on Earth, that the propulsion might be anti-gravity. When Lazar was shown the Tic Tac video for the first time, it immediately reminded him of the sport model, his name for the craft stashed in the desert. There's no question in my mind. I, I mean, I'm virtually certain that's the way the craft operated, and that uses close to or the exact same propulsion system. Former Pentagon intelligence officer Lou Elizondo was in charge of ATEM, the secret Pentagon study. He told us one goal of the project was to determine the physics of UFOs, how they can achieve the seemingly impossible. The military came to believe the craft relied on special metamaterials, stuff that can't be made with known technology. Lazar made similar claims decades ago and was ridiculed. Now the Pentagon is on the same page. Where the study of UFOs did not end in 1969 with Project Blue Book. In fact, that was a lie, and it is now an admitted lie by our own Pentagon. We are living in a world where it is understood that there are craft technologically advanced from unknown origin that are performing maneuvers that far exceed anything of human technology. This has been going on a long time, and our government has been studying it. George Knapp, 8 News Now. So there you have that. Uh, some of it's the original, some of it's not. Uh, we'll, we'll talk a little bit about uh, Jeremy Corbell, who I think is a fucking nutcase, uh, sort of at the end of the show uh, when we go live with it. But uh, Lazar claimed that the vehicle he worked on was disabled and that the reactor in the vehicle was topped by a sphere or a semi-sphere, which emitted a force field capable of uh, repulsing human flesh, whatever the fuck that means. I don't know, but he said the vehicle said he said the vehicle had two levels. Uh, and this is the drawing that he sort of drew. Uh, the reactor was placed in the upper level of the ship, which some sort of antenna extended from the top surrounded. It was surrounded by three gravity amplifiers. These connected gra gravity emitters on the lower level rotated 180 degrees to put gravity to put out a gravity beam or anti-gravity wave in that the craft would then fly belly first into the distortion field. Please remember the statement of belly first because it's something that he said from day one, which we are seeing video evidence of today, which is very peculiar and odd. So please remember the whole belly first thing. So Lazar would go on to further claim that when he joined the program, he was handed briefing documents that cataloged historical inferences to Earth that went back 10,000 years. In these documents, it was explained that aliens or alien greys, uh, as we know, uh, had been coming to Earth and they came from, the, uh, from a planet which orbited the twin binary star system Zeta Reticuli. 
Uh, just so you know, no extrasolar planets have ever been found in Zeta Reticuli system, so that's kind of a throw-up uh, or a toss-up uh, of sorts. Uh, Lazar made additional claims that the seating of the ships was small and that he saw alien bodies or alien greys, <clears throat> which were small in size, but then he would change his story about that years later and would say that they might have been dolls used as a reference point for size. Uh, so that's one thing that he changed his point on. While Lazar has said that he <clears throat> was employed, he also claims that he was terminated because he was basically filming UFOs from a perch in the mountains and taking friends to see these ships flying around. And since that day, the government has gone to an ex insane extremes to silence him, uh, including accusations that they wiped his entire background from every database to make him look crazy. Uh, the reason why I am not going to, excuse me, <laughs> the reason why I'm I didn't go to into his entire background uh, is because I don't want to shove so much down your throat to make you confused. I want to keep his claims as basic as they are. The reality here is skeptic or not. We have to look at his claims and then we have to look into his story uh, and history to discern whether Bob Lazar is an honest guy who just whistle blew the government or he's just a fucking nut selling us a story. Usually when you do these sort of things, there are some truths, there are some embellishments, and usually there's enough on both sides to make you sit in the middle and say, well, this could be possible, that can't be. So you're always in the middle ground uh, with these sort of things. However, with Bob Lazar, uh, while you may have you know feet on both sides of that aisle, the one thing that overpowers both sides is the stuff that he has alleged looks to be uh, really becoming more and more accurate. Keep in mind, this is over 30 years ago. He said this stuff and everybody said he was a fucking nut, a fucking nutcase, a, a wackadoodle, whatever the fucking case may be. But a lot of the things he has said have become more and more and more accurate. Remember, go back 30 some years ago, we weren't talking about UFOs. Now the government's showing videos of them. Uh, and we'll get into all that. So what we have to address, to be fair, uh, because I'm going to have the alien nuts come after me for this, and 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 then the purists are going to come after me for this too. But what has Bob Lazar stated about his education? We, we need to really understand that. Okay, so what he has said throughout history is that he went to Pierce College, then he went to Caltech, then he went to uh, California State University at Northridge. He then stated that he went to work for Fairchild and then he would return to Caltech. He claimed to have earned a master's degree in physics and electric technology. Uh, he also has claimed to have earned a master's degree from MIT and Caltech. The problem is he's been unwilling to show proof that he has master's degrees in physics or anything. And research has shown that he never attended any of these colleges. He has not been able to prove that. Uh, the only college where Lazar, where we can prove that Lazar attended college is Pierce Junior College in California State University. There is zero evidence, zero, to prove that he went to MIT. So on that basis, Lazar appears to have lied about his past or at least about getting degrees from certain places. What further mars his reputation is a pandering charge that he was convicted for in 1990. His probation and parole report, he claimed the following, that uh, on, in August of 76, he graduated from high school in Westbury, New York. In 1978, he got a Bachelor of Science degree in Physics and Electronic Technology, Pacifica University, which was a correspondent university. In 1982, he got a Master's in Science and Physics at MIT Cambridge. Uh, in 1985, he got a Master's in Science from uh, in Electronic Technology from Caltech. So, but there's no proof of any of this. So, what is true? What legitimately is true? Well, what we know is that he did graduate from high school in Westbury, New York on Long Island. Uh, we know that that's true. Following that, the Lazar family moved to California, purchasing a home in the San Fernando Valley in June of 1977. And it's reasonable to assume that they had rented uh, something in the area prior to purchasing that house. So that would have put Lazar in the same area by 76 or 77. Lazar has claimed to have attended Pierce College on a two-year community college in 76. His attendance at that college, uh, although it's really not precise of a time period, has been verified by 
uh, a guy by the name of Stanton Friedman. Lazar's attendance at Pierce is quite likely given that he would have lived fairly close to the college at that point in time. So nobody really has a beef with that. Also in the same general time period, Lazar claims to have attended Cal State Northridge just for a short time, just for a couple of classes. Uh, and it could have been possible because it, it really wouldn't con, you know, conflict with what he was doing at the time. The next time that we can pin down Lazar's whereabouts was on July 27th of 1980 when he marries his first wife, Carol. According to the marriage certificate, he was living in Canoga Park and he listed his occupation as an electronics engineer. Curiously, he also listed the highest grade of his school completed, uh, completed was high school. His location is consistent with statements that he's made about working for Fairchild Industries, which was located in the San Fernando Valley. Yet there's nothing, no employment checks to prove that. Uh, moving towards the future, Lazar again surfaces almost two years later in the famous Los Alamos Monitor jet car story from June 27th of 1982. The paper said the Lazars had moved to Los Alamos about a month prior, uh, uh, from a month prior. Uh, from other statements in the article, it's apparent that Lazars had been in California for some time and that he had just started work at LANL. Uh, yet, this is the year that Lazar claimed on at least two occasions to have received a master's degree from MIT. However, there's no evidence whatsoever that Lazar was anywhere other than California or Los Alamos at that time. So he's lying. Or there's something more to it. There is no evidence in any of the numerous public records concerning Lazar that he had ever been around Massachusetts in his life. When Lazar filed for bankruptcy in July of 1986, the information that he's required to provide gives an accurate snapshot of where he was in his activities in the years immediately prior to that filing. And is there anything in the massive data that would could even remotely allow for Lazar to spend a year at Caltech, you know, obtaining his master's degree that he claimed in 85? Well, in this bankruptcy, he states that the only places that he's lived in the previous six years were two addresses in Los Alamos. Uh, and those aren't uh, legitimate either. They're fraudulent because he didn't arrive in Los Alamos, Alamos till 1982. <coughs> he also states that his occupation for the previous six years was a photo processor at his residence. Oddly, Los Alamos employment was not even mentioned at the time. It also shows that he was very active in the Los Alamos area in 1985, borrow heavily, borrowing heavily, apparently in part to support his photo processing business. For example, the records show in March of 85, he borrowed 12 grand to upgrade his business's film printers. Other purchases in 85 included a Corvette for 19,000, a number of personal loans, and finally a house in Las Vegas of June of 1985. So if we're if we're supposed to believe the Omni magazine uh, in 1985, Lazar was on vacation in Nevada and he tried to buy into a whorehouse and he got caught. And the records clearly show that in 85 in the years prior, Lazar was either at Los Alamos or occasionally in Las Vegas. So there's not even a hint that he was working towards a master's degree uh, in Pasadena at Caltech or in Cambridge, Massachusetts. So he's either lying or there's something else going on here. Uh, and it's important because you have to look at the character of the person you're talking about. Uh, and now that we sort of have an idea of when, you know, where and when Lazar was, we have to look at a detailed look at what information is available for each of these schools. I went all out for this, all right? So uh, W. Tresper Clark High School in Westbury, New York. Uh, there is no debate. He did go to school there, and he did graduate. Uh, he graduated in August, not June of 76. Uh, and a lot of that sort of explains because he graduated in August means he was probably didn't have enough credits to hire, to graduate. Uh, he actually ranked 261 out of 369. He was in the bottom third, and he never took chemistry in high school. That is going to be a prerequisite for physics, just telling you. Pacifica University, the statement that... He received a bachelor's degree from Pacifica and he labeled it a correspondence university is a little bit weird. Um, there have been multiple statements by Lazar concerning his education, but none of them does he say where he received an undergraduate degree. Uh, and it's a subject he sort of tries to skip around a lot of times. Unfortunately, Pacifica University, you can't find it. 
Um, you know, you can check uh, the national college directories, uh, including those that listed vocational and corresponding schools. Uh, even the college blue book of American universities and colleges, the, the, the Macmillan guide of correspondence study. Th nobody's ever heard of this school. Nobody. Uh, Pierce college. Well, Lazar's attendant at attendance at that college has been corroborated through a lot of different people, although they don't know how many times he went or how long he was there. So when Lazar was asked to name some of his professors at MIT and Caltech, Lazar responded with the name Dr. Duxler at Caltech. According to Glenn Campbell, the only Duxler listed, listed in the 1993 National Faculty Directory was a guy by the name of William Duxler, who was the director of computing for Pierce College, not Caltech. Uh, MIT, uh, standard inquiries were made not only by George Knapp and others, but it turned up nothing. Uh, Friedman informed people that he took the additional step of checking with the alumni office and at least the 1982 commencement list. Uh, Glenn Campbell visited MIT in 1993 and searched through a number of printed student records there. The idea behind that effort was uh, that while elimination of computer records could be within the realm of possibility, it's essentially inconceivable that at some agency would have the capability to change printed records that had widespread distribution. Uh, Lazar, or any obvious misspellings of his name, people checked, and he was not listed at MIT uh, at all. Uh, not in the student directory between 78, from 1978 and 1990, Bob Lazar's name never shows up. Other publications checked included the MIT faculty and staff telephone directories from 78 to 1990, the MIT degree list from 79 to 1990, and the 1989 MIT alumni AE register uh it was exhaustive searching coupled with the june 1982 los alamos monitor story puts lazar in los alamos newly arrived from california leads to the inevitable conclusion that lazar never went to mit or cal tech he lied or and the reason why i keep saying or is because we're going to get to the or part so Caltech, Lazar has claimed on different uh, occasions that he got a master's degree from Caltech in either electronics or electronic technology. Standard inquiries by others and George Knapp found zero evidence of his attendance. A recent visit with Natalie Gilmore of the Caltech Graduate Studies Department provided information. Caltech does not currently have, nor has it ever had, any sort of graduate degree in electronics or electronic technology or anything close to those names. Caltech does offer a degree in electrical engineering. So here's the point. He's inventing a degree uh, from Caltech that doesn't even exist. It doesn't even exist. And so it's one thing to say, oh, well, the government, you know, erased all my files and they're trying to come after me because of this, this, that, and the third. But when a degree program that you're talking about has never existed at that college, chances are you're fucking lying. Uh, and the reason why it's important is because you have to, if you're going to talk about a, a, a guy who's telling you all of these super secret alien things, you have to look at his past because his past is also going to dictate his future to some degree. So with all of that, uh, how do you explain any of it, right? Uh, Lazar, and these are the three things that I was able to come up with in just looking at the three things that I think possibly have gone on. So Lazar has either lied and continues to lie about his educational background. That's number one. And that's probably the most feasible thing. Number two, in addition to all his other activities, Lazar was able to find time to pursue higher education. And he may actually possess a degree or certain degrees, but for unknown reasons, wants to keep it a secret and uses the Caltech and MIT degrees as a cover uh, and, and just continuing to take abuse over that. And I don't know why somebody would take abuse for 30 years over that. Uh, and the other strange option would be that the people at S4, as part of their efforts to discredit Lazar, in some way implanted the absolute conviction in Lazar's mind that he possesses these degrees, making him appear a fraud to anybody checking into his past. And then there's the whole government uh, cover-up. Uh, I don't want to play into conspiracy theories too much on this show, but I, I do think it's possible the government could do that absolutely i mean they can do anything they want to do but i also think lazar probably lied a great deal uh and, and this is where the story gets fucking wilder 
when George Knapp investigated Lazar, uh, most of what Lazar claimed, uh, he was unable to prove. However, Lazar kept saying that he worked at Los Alamos lab. And when Knapp called, Los Alamos said they never heard of Bob Lazar in their life. However, Lazar took Knapp and a photojournalist to the lab himself. And Knapp went on record as saying, when they approached the gate, security knew who he was, and they let him right in. And everybody that they ran into along the way seemed to know who Bob was. Scientists greeted him. So if they knew him, why is there no record of that? And it's about to get even weirder. Bob has long claimed to have been hired as a physicist in Los Alamos in May of 1982. For evidence about his employment, there was an article written by Terry Englund on June 30th of 1982. And this is what he said. To Lazar, a physicist at Los Alamos Mason physics facility, the important thing is the jet engine, which is something he's been working on for years. This came out in a magazine in 1982 with a photo of Lazar. And he's called a physicist at Los Alamos. So in 2020, Terry England, who wrote this, uh, this article, he was interviewed about Bob Lazar, and he stated on the record, Terry England uh, about Bob Lazar's occupation as a physicist at Los Alamos. And during the interview, Jeremy Corbell, who's a fucking nut, we'll get into that, possibly, he said, look, here's the point. You said Bob Lazar was a physicist at Los Alamos. So how did you base that? You're writing a paper. And England agrees, yes, I was. And it got picked up by the AP News. And he goes, yes, if I misrepresented that he was a physicist at Los Alamos, I would have been blackballed by everybody at Los Alamos. They take that very seriously. He was a physicist. I reported it. It's factual. He worked there. The AP News picked it up and they repeated it. And there was not a word from anybody saying that he wasn't a physicist. That's odd. However, there are two former lab employees who worked directly with Bob Lazar. The first one is a physicist named John Jarmer. And the second one, according to uh, somebody else, had an administrative role, but he wanted to remain unidentified. Jarmer worked at the lab for 20 years in the polarized proton section. Besides Joe uh, Venetti, who worked alongside Bob, is listed as an author on multiple original research papers with John Jarmer. John Jarmer, Bob Lazar, and Giovanetti's lab uh, directory entries. So if a guy never worked at Los Alamos, he wasn't a physicist, he never did anything ever, how does everybody at Los Alamos know him? How do other two other physicists know him? Why is his name put on research papers that they were doing at Los Alamos? How is that possible? If he never worked there, his name would be on nothing. <coughs> there are other documents and accounts stating that Lazar had worked at S4, which was a government laboratory near Groom Lake. Uh, Richard uh, Geldrich did a lot of research in connecting the dots to Bob Lazar's stories. Um, and it, it's just, it, it's very, it's very, very odd. So what I want to do, I think, is play another video so let's play another video so what we're going to do is is we'll just show two videos here of uh where s4 is located and uh just show you kind of the area we're talking about extremely well camouflaged. Years later, Lazar will have a graphic artist create detailed renderings based on his own drawings of what he claims he saw at S4. There are hangar doors that are sand textured and standing back maybe three or four hundred feet, you really can't see them at all. It pretty much just looks like a continuation of the mountain.
So just very quickly, I want to show you the infamous gimbal video. And what's weird about this is for, you know, Bob Lazar not to know anything. He told you 30 years ago, they fly belly up. And not only am I going to show you the gimbal video, but I'm going to show you uh, the how the USS Nimitz was surrounded by alien craft and couldn't figure out where they were coming from and how to get rid of them. And it's important that we see this. There's a whole fleet of them, look on the ASA. My gosh. They're all going against the wind. The wind's 120 knots to the west. Look at that thing, dude. That's not an LNS though, is it? It's not. That is an LNS, dude. Well, if there's like another thing, it's rotating. Of them. Look on the ASA. My gosh. They're all going against the wind. The wind's 120 knots to the west. Look at that thing, dude. That's not an LNS, though, is it? It's not. That is an LNS, dude. Well, if there's like another thing, it's rotating. 
what certainly qualify as UFOs during encounters with the U.S. Navy. There's no question that the Pentagon has censored data to go along with the photos and videos, but none of that information has been leaked or otherwise released, that is, until today. For two long hours on the night of July 15, 2019, the crew of the USS Omaha detected on multiple sensor systems unknown objects that surrounded the ship as it moved through ocean waters west of San Diego. One of the objects, a self-illuminated sphere at least six feet in diameter, flew alongside the Omaha for an extended period and was observed through a thermal sensor in the ship's combat center. Filmmaker Jeremy Corbell released released the Navy video weeks ago and says similar events were reported by eight other Navy ships in the same area over three days. Mark Bearing Range. There was numerous warships that are having similar um, coordinate appearing it appears to be coordinated interaction and uh, and and this and this whole series was within this kind of I'd say circumference of a hundred miles and and there was up to 50 to 100 contacts in the last three years the pentagon has reluctantly confirmed the legitimacy of ufo images captured by navy ships and air crews including these photos taken off the coast of virginia and the better known videos the so-called tic tac incident and the gimbal <laughs> But other than the images themselves, there's been no release of sensor data to buttress these cases. There is now. Well, if you can write a general that long where we're at, and, uh, in, uh, in the number of contacts you got, the force of speed leaders on. Over a period of hours, crew members on the USS Omaha, which is located in the center of this radar screen, monitored the approach of the unknown objects, as many as 14 at one point, all around the ship. Two different radar systems watched the objects and estimated their speed. Track 781 just sped up to 46 knots, 50 knots, closing in. Corbell obtained the images from sources he declines to identify. The Pentagon's UAP task force considers the Omaha spheres to be true unknowns. The ships that were under observation by the unknowns were unable to track where they came from or where they disappeared to. The Omaha sphere appears to have vanished into the ocean. Splashed. At that point, it also vanished from all sensors. In one video snippet, nine of the objects were seen around the Omaha, but two of them dropped off, somehow invisible to two radar systems. And it So, uh, in the gimbal video, uh, as you uh, as you saw, uh, there's a mechanic turn against the wind uh, without deceleration, and and so what we have is a craft without rotors, without heat signatures, without plumes without tail fins and certainly no tail number moving in a way that is counterintuitive to what uh, aeronautically we can actually do. <coughs> and so when Bob Lazar actually saw the gimbal video, he described basically, uh, he's basically seeing what he described 30 years earlier uh, and doubled down once again on the element 115 as the power source for anti-gravitational propulsion. Uh, but, uh, you know, the, the element 115 at the time, 30 years ago, wasn't even on the periodic table, but now it is, uh, you know, it, does it seem like a coincidence? I mean, it definitely is. So is it a lucky guess on Lazar, Lazar's behalf? Is the government capable of distorting reality to cover its ass back in the 1980s? Absolutely. Uh, the skeptics who say that, uh, you know, someone without, let's say, a physics degree cannot work in that world is just not true. Uh, number one, my father was a physicist, okay? And I'm just going to kind of leave it there. Uh, and secondly, I can tell you that I know somebody who literally got a job with the CIA uh, through a newspaper posting, believe it or not. And the job basically described as field work and stuff like that for a government contractor. And what he ended up doing was getting a job training CIA agents. And, and basically what he does, he trains spooks on how to kill people, how to kidnap people, uh, how to uh, abduct people. Uh, and, and so basically he applies for this job and he gets this job. 
And his job is to train active field agents in the CIA how to kill people. He doesn't have a military background. He has nothing special. But his specialty is training them after being with this company for so long. And I'll give you an example. They would take agents out into the field into an urban area like D.C., Richmond, Virginia, and they would kidnap other CIA agents off of the street. Literally, like in broad daylight in front of a ton of fucking people, they would train them how to do this. They were also given a manual of every car manufacturer, every car that's ever been made, and they knew all of the pressure points in the frame of every car, be it a Ford, be it a Buick, be it a Chevy, whatever. They knew the point of in impact where they could hit any individual car and kill the motherfucker driving it. Those are facts. He had earpieces that were the tiniest little earpieces I've ever seen in my life. You would pull them out with tweezers uh, that came on, and how they would pull them out was they had fishing string that would stick out of them. Uh, guns, weapons, uh, they did all sorts of things and his job was to train people how to do this kind of stuff and this is a guy that had no experience he had a uh you know a, a college degree from a, a normal university i know another guy who was trained with the cia who had a veterinary degree uh so it, it, it's not too hard to believe that somebody that doesn't have a physics degree could not be somebody hired for this uh, but would Bob's crimes keep him from getting a position at th that high level of a security job? No, absolutely not. The fact is, assets are assets for reasons. And those background crimes, if anything, would provide the government with blackmail evidence. And where I sort of tear, uh, you know, where I sort of tend to veer off, of course, is that Area 51 is, it's, it's not a weird place. Uh, it's where our military builds weapons, secret weapons, bottom line. But where people get confused is by thinking that Lazar went to Area 51, whereas he was south of 51. And that's an entirely different beast, entirely different. Uh, my father worked, he had been to Area 51 before, uh, and my father worked out of the Pentagon a lot. So we're just going to leave that all there. Uh, but for Lazar, who claims that the FBI and the government erased his life, they went to extremes to bury his achievements, uh, are pretty understandable if that's the case. However, why not show documents that you have degrees? I mean, surely you would have those printed out, right? But would it even matter? To me, not really. <clears throat> a lot of what Bob Lazar has said 30 years later appears to be more fact and based in reality than bullshit. In the Netflix documentary, Area 51 and the Flying Saucers, if you've never seen that, go and, and check it out and watch it. And we sort of get to see Bob Lazar's life and his story. And it's an interesting documentary voiced by Mickey Rourke. It was directed by Jeremy Corbell, but while the documentary is, is fantastic in many ways, the ending or Corbell's sort of lead uh, of the feds rating Lazar over the belief that Lazar possessed element 115 is about as pathetic and lie driven as it gets. Uh, what Corbell doesn't tell you is that the raid on Lazar's businesses uh, or his business in general, United Nuclear Scientific Equipment and Supplies, in 2016, it had nothing to do with aliens or Element 115, but rather were the murder investigation. Uh, what we know uh, is that prior to these events, which we're going to discuss, Lazar's business was raided in 2003, and then he was officially charged in 2006 by the government for violating the Harmful Federal Hazardous Substance Act for shipping well-known restricted harmful chemicals across state lines. Lazar would plead guilty to three criminal counts of introducing uh, into interstate commerce, aiding and abetting in the introduction to interstate commerce banned hazardous substances. Uh, in 2007, Lazar, through his company, was fined $7,500 for selling substances which were illegal to make fireworks. So is, is the government just picking on Bob Lazar? In 2016, while shooting this Netflix documentary, the FBI and local police raided his United Nuclear Scientific Equipment and Sales business. Corbell claimed it was a conspiracy because Bob was talking about working at S4, full well knowing that that's not the reason why they were there, and he was just perpetuating the documentary The Alien Nonsense. Many believe Lazar stole Element 115 from S4, but I can tell you, if the government thought that, he would be dead. That's just the end of it. Uh, that's what they would do. Corbell plays on the conspiracy nut theories. In reality, I think Corbell is the biggest conspiracy nut that's ever lived. Uh, the FBI and the local police were investigating 
because Lazar had sold thallium from his business. Thallium, much like cyanide, cyanide, excuse me, is odorless, tasteless, and it works just like cyanide. It kills people. Uh, and what had happened is somebody in Michigan had ordered it and killed somebody else while using it. And the government just wanted to search that location for thallium. They wanted to look at emails. Uh, and it turns out that somebody had donated these elements to Lazar, and he, pr he pretty much just put them on sale and sold them. Uh, the FBI at the time was looking for receipts, really nothing more at all, uh, nothing more at all. Uh, I have a copy of the search warrant. Uh, they weren't looking for anything else. Uh, they came with search warrants, obviously, and Lazar was more than helpful to let them do whatever they wanted to do. They were looking for sales, receipts, all the records on past orders by a certain individual. And that's all there was to it. But Jeremy Corbell and Lazar stretched this into making it some wide conspiracy. Uh, and Lazar would go on to say they were not interested in thallium. And he would explain that the agents, uh, specifically two of them, questioned him on element 15 uh, and uh, something else. And this is the conversation that he has with Corbell on the screen is that he's saying, well, you know, they, they came downstairs. They mentioned element 115. Um, and, you know, uh Lazar says, do these two initiate the raid or were they just ride alongs with an existing raid? Uh, and nobody seems to know, but what was clear is that they knew much more than the rest of the crew downstairs. There's not video footage of that. I have a hard time believing that. I think that's Lazar and I think Corbell inventing things to make the documentary seem more conspiracy laden. Uh, Lazar would go on to say that officials seem to be primarily concerned with gaining access to the United Nuclear's computers. They indicated they had no computer experts there uh who wanted to access all of the computers which i freely said yeah go ahead uh and like i said earlier i have the warrants here uh they were looking for receipts and emails which involved all of the substances they were looking for and lazar and corbell for whatever reason are just flat out lying uh there is no statement uh there is even a statement by somebody who was working at united nuclear at the time and i'm going to show that here where it shows they were raided and why they were raided. It goes against exactly what they said in the Netflix documentary. As you can see, talks about we were just raided by the FBI, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, but they say the complete opposite in the Netflix documentary. And so why would Lazar perpetuate more lies? I mean, that just kind of baffles me. Corbell is a nut. He's always been a nut. Uh, I don't like the guy at all. Uh, every show he's been on, he's a preening, uh, peacocking, know-it-all. Uh, and he typically forgets to mention certain things. Like, we can't prove that Lazar went to any of these colleges. Uh, but what, you know, what is odd is that many of the things that Lazar has said have come true. So we can buy into the conspiracy stuff all day long. And I think we can all agree to some extent that Bob Lazar was right on some things and that the government will lie. They will distort. They will ruin you if that's what they feel they need to do. But to what extent can you actually keep everybody on the same fucking page? That's to me is, is sort of what makes this all so fucking odd. <coughs> Surely somebody would talk, right? And the thing is, is over the years, many skeptics and governmental officials said L Lazar was a fucking nut. Uh, they, they, they called him a liar. They called out, uh, you know, retired Navy captains saying that they were nuts. They were delusional. They were crazy at the things that they were saying. And now look at where we're at with this alien thing or this UFO thing. Uh, the government is actually putting $22 million a year into UAP stuff, which is an unidentified aerial phenomenon. Um, but like, as usual, I leave it all up to you to decide, but do I think that Bob Lazar is a liar? I think he's lied about some things. Absolutely. Only to amplify his story. But I also think he knew about too many things just that normal people couldn't manufacture on their own and be right about anybody can take a guess, but to say things 30 years ago that are now coming true is there's no such thing as coincidence. Uh, but you have to acknowledge even at best there are just too many factors that sort of lean more towards Lazar being honest about things to a greater extent than people ever give him credit for. Uh, Corbell is just a nut following the, the, the pathological conspiracy lines. That's what he does. And those are just facts. And that's kind of who Bob Lazar is. And, and so at the end of the day, the, the one thing we got to say is, 
for everything that Bob Lazar said, everything's flying belly up. What do we believe? What do we believe? Do we believe that Lazar is a nut or do we believe that he's telling half truth and half bullshit? Because let me explain something to you. Back in this, the, back in the 50s and 60s when this UFO shit started, they would go out and try to ruin people. The government would. They didn't fuck around. So is it possible to believe that they could have deleted Bob Lazar's existence? Well, I think that, that what we have and what we've talked about proves that there was some sort of try to cover up because we know he worked at Los Alamos. We know he did. People there know him, knew him, said he was a physicist. And you can self-label yourself a physicist all day long. You really can. But he worked there. There was pay slips that he actually got from S4 where he was put on the payroll. Those have been published. That's factual. So it's like for every turn or for every uh, piece of evidence that we get that, say, that, that says Lazar was a fucking nut, then there's evidence that proves he wasn't. And so we're never going to know who's telling the truth and who isn't. But what I think you have to look at is, yes, he came along at a time and started saying things that nobody could fucking believe. But what's crazy about it is he said a lot of things 30 years ago that are very, very true right now. And the government has been denying the existence of unidentified aerial phenomenon forever. Now they're talking about it like it's holy shit which is going to lead to this question. And this is what we're going to talk about in the live is, are these things something from another world or are they secret technology that this country and other countries have developed? And we just don't know about to my knowledge, there's no such thing as anti-gravity with our technology at this point. But then again, we have a cell phone where we could buy Tic Tacs and as in fucking Alaska, if we wanted to. So, you know, my father, he actually worked in Black World Ops. So a lot of this kind of stuff he was very familiar with, unfortunately. So anyway, let's open it up to the chat and see what everybody has to say. All right. So there you have it. Uh, the one thing I do want to show you guys, uh, let me remove this really quick. And, and this is important. And, and this is my point. Uh, if you go to the Netflix documentary, Bob Lazar and Flying Saucers, and you follow this log line of the FBI is writing us for the aliens in Element 115. Well, they play it up and they say all of that, but like literally within an hour, this was within an hour of Lazar's shop being raided, this is what uh, the United Nuclear employee put out. I'm going to post this really quick. And it just raises an interesting question that I have. Uh, hold on one second. Let me go to, there we go. Hopefully you guys can see this. Okay, it says United Nuclear here. Before the rumor mill gets out of control, he wanted to set the record straight. We had a customer a few years ago that murdered his wife. FBI local law enforcement uh, came with a warrant to get our records on him. We provided him the documents and we had info on him. So he's sort of caught lying uh, because there's another thing, and I'm not going to show it because it has uh, a picture of somebody in Bob Lazar's family. Uh, but basically, uh, a lot of people believe that this is Bob Lazar that actually posted this. Uh, and that's sort of my problem with Bob Lazar is, you know, he tells the truth sometimes and he, and he doesn't tell the truth at other times. And if you're somebody that wants people to believe certain things, you know, people are going to unfortunately pull up your past. And there's a lot of things in his past that don't make any sense. However, what I don't, um, you know, uh, and, and just to, just to prove to you guys that this is what, why the FBI went there. Uh, let me share this. This is directly from the local police and FBI. That's what they were looking for. This is just specifically that they're looking for thallium. Uh, they're basically explaining where this case information came from, uh, where the element came from, how Bob Lazar got the element, uh, and et cetera, et cetera. So all of this stuff that Corbell must have tried to talk him into saying about, oh, they're here for element 115, it's just nonsense. And the problem is that hurts Bob Lazar. And it hurts Bob Lazar for the following reasons. 
Uh, I happen to believe a lot of what Bob Lazar says. I really do. Uh, I know that you can go work for the government in this in the, the certain sector, and you don't have to be a physicist. If you're highly intelligent and you know what you're doing, those are people they're going to recruit. Okay, but I know my father being a physicist. I know the schooling that he had to go through. Uh, also, I will say this: uh, as far as the black world goes, that would be considered an, a black world operation. Okay, my father had to take a lie detector test once a month, once a month. And there were also rules. I could not tell people what my father did for a living. He wasn't a CIA guy. He was a black world operative. And basically when people asked, I had to say he was a health physicist, a health physicist. Well, what the fuck is that? Right. And he had multiple passports and all kinds of stuff. But my whole entire childhood, there were a few things. I couldn't tell people exactly where he worked. Uh, he would leave and we could not get a hold of him uh, on the phone for any reason because there was no phones wherever he went. Um, also, if we ran into anybody that was North Korean or Russian, if I had friends that I met that were Russian or North Korean, I had to let my father know immediately. And he would have to go tell his people, my, you know, my kids got a friend who's Russian and they would, I would assume naturally go and look into this kid's family. Uh, yes, that is how that Russian spy died. A hundred percent. That's what they used the same stuff. Uh, anyway, so it's, it's not impossible to believe that, that, um, Bob Lazar couldn't have gotten that job. I just think when you bring people like Jeremy Corbell into there, it, it just, it, you know, Bob, people are already going to say Bob's nuts anyway. Right. But everything that Bob has kind of said for 30 years, we're starting to see now is true and accurate. So, is Bob Lazar lying? I don't think he's lying about what he did. Do I think he amplified some of the things he might have saw? Absolutely. Uh, do I think that this country has anti-gravitational stuff? Uh, yeah, they probably do at this point. I mean, for Christ's sakes, we can cloak tanks now. I don't know if you guys know this. You can go to YouTube, type in tanks that are cloaked. This country has the technology now to cloak tanks. You can't even see them coming. They can do the same with soldiers. So it wouldn't be impossible to believe that these things, um, you know, couldn't be from this, this, this world. You, you know what I mean? Uh, let's see. What about the man who worked for the CIA who was thrown out a window of New York City because they tested LSD on him and the family didn't know? 50 years later, exhumation government is slick. Yeah, they absolutely are. Whitey Bulger was a part of a lot of that, too, unfortunately. I hate to bring him up. Uh, but it's crazy. But I do want to show you something. Uh, hold on a second. Could it also be that Bob told the truth, but later they got him finally, and he's going along with the program with denial? No, because I don't think he's denying anything. He's still speaking out. He's still doing things. Um, you know, it, it, it's one of those things we're never going to know. Do I believe in that we're not the only thing in this world? Absolutely. 100% I believe that. Uh, do I think little green men in spaceships are coming? No, I, I don't necessarily believe that either. And I'm going to tell you a theory why, uh, because people have a tendency to ask me this question. And it, it, the reason why your government, our government, is never going to tell you that aliens exist. Let's pretend that the alien greys exist. And let's pretend for thousands of years or 100 years, whatever the case may be, we have just been in contact with them. The reason why your government is never going to tell you that is because it's going to destroy religion and the belief in God immediately. It is going to destroy religion completely and utterly. That's why they will not do it. And I'm not trying to make it a whole thing, but the first thing, the first thing people are going to say is, well, God made people in his likeness. You know, Adam and Eve, the rib and all of this and that. Well, where the fuck did these big eyed fuckers come from? Did God invent them too? That's why they're not going to tell you that. That, and I'm going to tell you this too. I don't think that they know how to deal with it. Uh, I just don't think they know how to deal with it. Uh, but it's weird also at the same time. It's weird at the same time that they're acknowledging it. Now, which if the government for all of these years refused to acknowledge the existence and now they are, that smells to me, and you guys may disagree with me, but that smells to me like, we are the ones who have invented these machines because anytime the government tries to parlay bullshit onto the American public, this is how they do it. First, they try to make you look crazy 
And then they finally kind of come on and say, well, gee, look at that. Uh, you know, so that's where I kind of, you know, uh, stand on it. I think religiously, if, if, can you imagine if uh, Joe Biden came out and says, by the way, I, I want everybody to know we've known alien grays. We have a peace treaty with them. Religion and churches no longer exist. It's over with. And everything in this country, everything in our world is beliefed in, or, or, or uh, all of our laws are based on a religious code. Everything that we believe in, everything in the justice system, everything that we do, everything is based around the belief in God. You introduce a fucking alien on TV and that's going to change the landscape. That's why they don't want to do it. Uh, and that's why they, so you could have an argument that that's why they would sit on never talking about aliens. But I think the reality is if it's something that they can't explain, they'll attempt to make you look like a fucking nut. That's number one. But then when the government starts to come across and admit it, that tells me that it's not necessarily what you might think. It tells me it's a government thing. Uh, if you think that, uh, we can't do things like that or make things like that, um, you know, and that's my thing. I, listen, I was brought up Roman Catholic, okay? Uh, but I have to tell you something right now. If I'm in the middle of a cornfield and a ship stops and beams me aboard and sticks a finger in my ass, that's going to change how I feel about God and the saints and everything. I immediately would not believe in any of it. And that's just how I feel. And this country is so founded on the belief in God. I mean, come on, before they send you to death, you go to court, you got to raise your hand and swear to God. Like, this is what the country and our laws and, and our foundations are built on. It's just reality. It's just reality. But I want to show you something. I want to show you something. Let me see if I can pull this up. It's going to be very quick. You guys are going to have to pay. I'll play it a couple of times, all right? This video was taken by a helicopter flying over a ship in the middle of the ocean. You're not going to fucking believe this. And this is not fake. This is not trick photography. This is not Photoshop because it was analyzed by a lot of different people. This is fucking real. Okay. Let me pull it up. Let's see. It's going to go really quick. Okay. So here's what I want you guys to focus on. Cause I'm going to rewind it. Let me, let me, let me I'm going to, I can talk over it. Yeah. Okay. What you're seeing is an aircraft carrier. Okay. Over on the right-hand side, you see other airplanes. You see a, a F-18 landing. I think it's a Hornet. And you see a helicopter on the right-hand side. I'm going to go forward very slowly. Do you see what's sitting behind the helicopter? Do you see what's sitting behind the helicopter? What the fuck is that? All right, so I'll play it through a couple of times. What the fuck is that thing? Okay, hold on. I'm going to go back. What the fuck is that on an aircraft carrier? And I'm going to show you a still shot of what it is. Okay. So let me uh, remove that and I'm going to show you a still photo. And I would love for somebody to explain unequivocally, not just tell me, oh, it's this or that. I want you to unequivocally explain to me what the fuck this is. Because it looks awful familiar to other things that have been videotaped um, in the air. There we go. What the fuck is that? I don't know what the TRB-3 is. It's a triangle ship, but what the fuck is that? And if you look at a lot of these, remember, they fly belly up. So where you see the circle right here. It would be pointed, it would be facing towards you flying. Now you can go to YouTube and type in UFOs being watched, the triangle videos, and you'll see something that looks fucking identical to this. <laughs> I think it's an espresso machine. Yeah, there you go. Uh, but that's, but that's, oh uh, yeah, here we go. Pete the Killer, I can tell you, but you know. Uh, it, it's weird. It's just absolutely weird. But if you go to some of the videos that are on YouTube and you look at them, they would be forward facing or belly up, right? So this round part would be facing out uh, outward. And uh, if you go to some of those videos on YouTube and you see the triangular shapes, which move and seem to, to kind of go in a certain way, that kind of fits a narrative. 
I'm not saying it's anything, but I'm telling you this video, video was analyzed a dozen times by a lot of people, and they, they don't know what it is. So I don't know. I don't know if aliens exist or not. I really don't. Uh, I, I, would, I would raise one question. Uh, I would definitely raise one question to all of you in the chat. And I guess this is going to be funny, but why is it that aliens only abduct rednecks in Montana and then do gay stuff to them? <laughs> like, like, really? Like, from Travis Walton to all of these other people, they abduct men and, like, diddle them. I, I just, I don't understand that. That's what aliens do. They, they diddle them. I, <laughs> <laughs> All right, so the TRB3 is supposedly a reverse engineered ship that Americans made use uh, mercury and pressurized under. Now, see, that would make sense to me. But where did we get that technology? Because we surely couldn't have invented it ourselves. We're smart, but we're not that smart. You know? Uh, probably some high-tech craft that hasn't been told about. Well, if you guys remember, Area 51 was uh, the very specialized area where we worked on the, uh, the stealth the stealth bombers. And when people first saw the stealth flying, they freaked out and thought they were spaceships. <laughs> so, you know, I, listen, I, at the end of the day, I don't know what to tell you, but what I can tell you is one thing is for certain. They're never going to come out and say, oh, by the way, we've been working hand in hands with aliens because uh, it's going to destroy religion. And they can't have that in this country because if you destroy religion in this country, everyone's going to start killing each other. I'm telling you, because that's what keeps society somewhat chained. You tell them that there's no religion, God doesn't exist, and it's all a big fairy tale. You tell society that they are going to revolt against the government. They're not going to care at that point. And those are just uh, those are just the, the, the honest God's truth. I sh think that ship had the Q36 space modulator on it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, Operation Paperclip, I'm not going to get into right now, but yes, absolutely. So what do you guys think? You know, uh, listen, I don't buy much stock into the, the lizard people and shit. Uh, I, I don't buy any of that David Ick shit at all. I think he's another nut job. But there are people that I think legitimately uh, see stuff. And what I can tell you about my father is this, okay? Uh, my father never laughed at the alien shit. He never did. And I remember I used to ask him all the time and he'd do this three-fingered thing and just go take me to your leader, just joking around. But I remember I asked him right before he died, and I said, you know, Pop, do aliens exist? And he just said, watch the sky. That's all you got to do. Uh, and then that told me everything. Um, and my father wasn't the type of guy that would buy any load of shit from anybody. He just wasn't that type of guy. But he saw a lot of crazy shit. I'm sure he did. But he could never tell me anything. And I used to say, well, am I ever going to know what the fuck you did? And he goes, someday you will. Someday you'll read about it. So I don't know what that means. I, I really, I really, really don't. Um, if you look at Germany during World War II, I mean, Adolf Hitler, not that I want to talk about that disgusting pile of rat shit, uh, scumbag fuck that he was, they really believed this alien shit. And I believe, and somebody can correct me if I'm wrong, but didn't they, dur 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 didn't they during World War II attempt to reverse engineer a bunch of things to make their own flying saucers? Wasn't that one of the big things they wanted to do? I know they were really big into the occult, too. Uh, but I honestly think both God and aliens are real. It's just that gods or the gods ran away a long time ago, creating other universes while they were left here in one of the earliest gardens. <sighs> you know, I, I can't touch the religious thing, you know, because as I get older, I, I'm just going to be honest with you. Two things have happened. Um, when I was young, growing up, uh, you know, God was everything. You know, it's just how I was brought up. And then I reached a stage in my life where I said, you know, here's the thing. And I hate to say it like this. Famine, children being murdered, women being raped nonstop, especially children, like dying in horrible, awful ways. That's not a God that I would recognize. Uh, George Carlin has a very famous line of, and if you don't believe in what I say, I'm going to send you to a place where you're going to burn, you're going to suffer, but I love you. That's not a God I want to know or understand. And that's just me. But yet, the, the older I find that I get, the more you start to kind of go, well, you know, there's got to be something in this world that's better than this. And maybe it's aliens with the three fingers and the, 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 the dibbling, dibbling arms. I just don't know. 
I just don't know. I don't have a, an obsession with Nazi Germany. I can't stand Nazis or Germans, to be honest with you. They were meth heads. Yeah, Hitler was a meth head. Yeah, Hitler was a big meth head. They have videos of him where he's just all wigging out and shit. He's an evil fuck. He's an evil fuck. That's for sure. So what do you guys think? What do you think? Do you think do you think these spacecraft that we're seeing are made by us or do you think they're coming from somewhere else? Anybody have any ideas? Anybody have any beliefs? Oh, Chris Gorky finally wakes up. Eve's fault. <laughs> Oh, okay. Gotcha. Well, listen, everybody just be nice to each other. Everybody's listen, you guys can all have differing opinions. Just please keep it respectful. Uh, don't make accusations about people that aren't fair. Um, that is a great point, Robert. And, and that's what I've been kind of saying all along. I, I think I don't know so much that he enables Lazar. I think he pushes Lazar to stretch things. I don't think Lazar is lying. I think Lazar really worked at the places he worked. Uh, he had told tales of seeing alien bodies and shit. I don't believe that for a second. Um, but, you, you know, it's... Uh, look at the research of Igor Litowski in the German anti-gravity program, which had a higher clearance rating than the A-bomb program. Yes, absolutely. Uh, what about all these preset... That was cover-ups with kids being uh, pleasing in the preset... What the fuck... Okay, I don't know what you're trying to say. Uh, the Nazis are crazy and had some strange beliefs. Yes, they did. They did. They were huge occultists. They're all junkies. He he fed his own army meth. <laughs> like candy. You know? Uh, did they even make a comment about the triangle ship on the carrier? If not, then you have to wonder if this is a slick way of actually showing things without telling us. Well, that's a great point. That's a great point. Um I think you can take that either way. And I think my friend Harry Anderson here will say the same thing is sometimes the government will intentionally just throw shit out there just to see how society reacts to it. Because think about it. If our F-16s, our F-18s, our F-22s, if they cannot keep pace with these things, why haven't we shot them? We'll shoot a goddamn weather balloon out of the sky like it's nothing, but we don't shoot, we don't shoot at these fucking things. Why is that? So there's two arguments you could have for that. Biden will go, shoot that fucking balloon down. Okay, so we use we use a, a fucking uh, a five hundred thousand dollar missile on a weather balloon to shoot it down, right? But when we're following things in open ocean, why are we not shooting them down? Well, we're not shooting them down one because it's our fucking technology, and we don't want to shoot down a a two hundred billion dollar spaceship we invented, or our government is scared shitless. Those are your two options. What do you guys think? Seriously, what do you guys think about that? Do you think, uh, based on roughly Jim Jones' sort of statement here, do you think the reason why the, the Air Force and the Navy has not shot these fucking things down is because they're terrified or it's because the government doesn't give them clearance to shoot them down because we own it? That, to me, is... Uh, oh, yeah, definitely. That, to me, is an interesting question. Former Russian President um, Medvedev spoke pretty openly about Russian Secret Services looking into alien events. Yeah, oh, absolutely. Uh, allegedly, they dug up some sort of um, flying saucer that was dated back to, like, whatever time. So, uh-oh. All right, I don't know what's going on. Okay, Buck, you're going to have to go. Sorry, buddy. We're not going to tolerate abusing people in here, buddy. Sorry. I'll unblock you after the show, but you're not going to come in here treating any woman or anyone with disrespect. We're not going to do that. So sorry, Buck Marsh, but we just can't have that in here. Go uh, go handle that somewhere else. Uh, or maybe they can't shoot them down. Well, and that's sort of what I'm kind of trying to get at here. Do we not shoot them down because we don't have the capability? Because if these things can cloak at what? 18,000 miles an hour, what are you really shooting at? 
And what weapons do they have? And obviously they would, they, you would have to believe that they're friendly because, and it's always kind of given me this sort of idea and maybe you guys will agree, maybe you won't. Maybe this makes me a fucking nut. But I've often thought that we're the fucking experiment in their world. Because at any point, if their technology is that far ahead of ours, they could wipe us off the fucking face of the map. They could wipe us off the earth without hesitation. But they don't. They just kind of come in, check things out, diddle rednecks for some reason, and then just go about their day. You know? So I'm not sure. I'm not sure what to believe. Yes. That's, oh my God. Yeah. I, you know, uh, uh, I just watched Josh Gates did something on the Data Love Pass. He went there and like did an investigation. It was actually kind of cool. It's called uh, Expedition Unknown. Uh, very, very interesting. Uh, watch for the cookbook to serve Manrod, Sterling Twilight Zone. No, not a big deal. Listen, people can have disagreements, right? But the second you kind of try to get abusive, you're just going to leave. We did the one thing about me on this channel, even with the mob shit that I do, I just don't tolerate it from anybody. You're not going to come in here and abuse anybody. It's not what we're here to do. And if he doesn't like it, well, I would rather have people in here that can debate like adults versus name calling and stuff. So I'm just not going to do that. Uh, so I got, I got a good show coming up on Antarctica. I've got some really interesting stuff. I, you know, the thing is about doing this, this genre is, <clears throat> you know, is aliens horror? No, nah, not really. But I want to cover everything that's like really creepy and weird. So if you guys are new, uh, we've covered the Loch Ness. We've covered serial killings, mysteries, disappearances, Loch Ness Monster, Vlad Tepish. We've covered it all. And the next show we do is going to be very macabre. I got to admit, I got my hands on Ed Gaines' uh, confession. And it's disgusting. I, I got I to gotta be honest with you. It's absolutely atrocious and disgusting. But Ed Gain was the impetus for so many of the horror genre films like Texas Chainsaw Massacre, uh, Psych excuse me, Psycho. Just so many films have been based on him. I just want to give like a historical uh, sort of background. And he did some shit that's just really odd. <laughs> you know, just certain stuff that he's done is a little, it pales. Like you think Jeffrey Dahmer was bad. This guy makes them look like, you know, choir boys, you know? So... Uh, let's see. Agree. People should uh, be able to have different opinions and beliefs. And things. Well, right. Like I said, basically, I, I thought that if aliens existed, it would ruin God. I was waiting for the God people to attack me. Nobody attacked me. I think the um, I think the idea is, is that if you can have a community where you can go in and express your thoughts or your beliefs or your opinions and just be like, well, that's cool. I don't agree with you. But when people just go from like zero to I'll kill your mother in three seconds, uh, I just don't get it. I just don't get it. Uh, and we're just not going to let that happen here because I have too much respect for everybody uh, to do that. I, I've seen this, um, you know, done too many times. When Ed Gain had that woman hanging upside, ah, yes. Yes, he gutted her like a deer. <coughs> and the real, <coughs> the real macabre thing about him, and I don't want to spoil it for uh, a week after next, is that he was like digging up bodies and bringing them back and sleeping in bed with them. I mean, that's just not... Oh, it's just ugh, gross, gross. And for me, it's not about how, how raunchy or how dirty it is. It's what the fuck makes a person think that that's okay? Like, at what point do you have to be so fucking out of your mind crazy that you're like, yeah, I'm going to go dig up a corpse and sleep with it? Like, at what point do you pass that threshold of being that psychotic? That's what interests me. You know, all the other stuff really doesn't, but that's what interests me. What drives a human being? Because I, I think we can understand on a visceral level, if a plane lands, we're starving to death, well, you're going to go crazy after a certain amount of time. And eventually, Tommy, the guy that weighs 500 pounds, is going to look like a steak. And you may be able to avail of yourself to eat him. I get it. I understand that. But I'm talking people that just like kind of don't really have problems and they just decide one day, oh, I'm just going to eat everybody. I mean, to me, it's just, <laughs> you know what I mean? Uh, one case I'm really into is the Alcatraz escape and the Angler brothers. Ah, so here's my thing. I think they escaped. In fact, I know they did. 
I may have proof they did. So maybe we will talk about that. Uh, why do you think Russia wants Antarctica all to themselves? You want to know the mindset of Ed Gein? I do. Don't you wonder what possesses people? Like every one of you guys has had a girlfriend or a boyfriend at some point in your life, right? And you have to, maybe you're in the beginning stages of that whole, you're attracted, they're attracted, but nobody's really pushing it yet. And you sit at home and you think about them and wonder what they're thinking. It's the same sort of thing with Ed Gain. The only difference is he fucking ate people. <laughs> I mean, for me, I sit back and goes, what was so chaotic in his life or what was so evil in his life that led him to not only kill his brother, which he did, but like to dig people up and make nipple lampshade poles and tit belt buckles and lip lampshade. I mean, the guy did all sorts of goofy shit. Uh, by the way, D-Man, thank you very much. Even if you don't believe in God, the concept must stay alive or there will be murder, rape, and suicide on a massive scale. I 100% agree with you. And what I have always said and what I will always say, first of all, I do believe in God. Okay, let's get that straight across the board. I'm Catholic. I believe in God, Okay. Uh, Catholic jo jokes aside for a second, I have always said, if religion is good for one thing, it's because it teaches you morals and values and ethics. As skewed as they may be at times, it is a moral compass that's supposed to guide you to just living your best life and treating others how you would like to be treated. On that front, can't say anything bad about it. However, the fuckers that stand on the hill and want to use the Bible as a weapon, which was written by man, inspired by God, I know. But if you're going to use the Bible as a weapon, you have no business talking about it. And, and that's just where I come. That's just sort of where I stand on things. So religion isn't a horrible thing. But the problem is it's the organized religion and who leads it is what makes it sort of wishy-washy. So I think if everybody just like gave thanks and treated each other with respect and dignity and honor... We wouldn't have no problems, but D-Man is 100% right. You take all of that off the table, and you are going to see some wild shit. It would be like releasing Rikers Island and putting everybody on angel dust the minute they're walking out the door and saying, go ahead and have a good time, kids. you got the next 24 hours to do whatever you want. That's what would happen to this country, you know? Because this country always, you know, humans need something to blame. It can't just be the, just life it's got to be no the devil made him do it oh god saved his life it can never just be well you know some people are winners some people are fucking losers that's just the way life works and that's probably the first thing god's gonna ask me when i die oh so you wanted to uh question me did you uh no not really oh you wanted to talk about the mafia and rub elbows with gangsters and killers all life did you you know so we'll see crippling loneliness and grief is what made gain snap i think it's part that but i think it's part his mother was a religious zealot she was a fucking religious nut everybody was a harlot and a whore and if you're taught that from day one then the woman who, who 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 wears a dress is a whore what are you gonna think so i think that's a lot of it i think that that you have some uh oedipus complex stuff that went on but that's so when we talk about gain i want to talk about the mental side of it not necessarily like get visual like oh look at the way he cut her open like th to me that's not interesting uh let's see my buddy mozzarella boss says yes you need a show on the antarctic secret bases and alien technology absolutely uh let's see for a guy that knows the feds are absolutely corrupt you sure put a lot of faith in their work no i don't and if you know what if you ever listen to this show see this is what's wrong with people like you okay and i'm not gonna freak out because i'm just gonna block you this is what's wrong with what your problem is. You're one of these people that goes to room to room to room to room, making a different name every other week. You don't listen to what I say. You hear one sentence after you come in 20 minutes, and then you say stupid shit like this. I have never said that the feds told the truth. I've never said the government's told the truth. So instead of embarrassing you, Fuck face Ferrari, go fuck yourself F50. I'm going to ask my chat because they've been in here the long time and they know me. At any point, I want people in the room to listen to me very, very carefully. Hit the number one. Hit the number one. If I said that, uh, hit the number one. Let me read what he said. For a guy that knows the feds are probably corrupt, you sure put a lot of faith in their word. Put number one if you agree with him. Have I ever said I put faith in their word? Have I ever? 
He says, what murder? I just fucking showed you, you dunce. I just showed you unequivocal proof there was a murder for hire in Michigan. Learn to open your fucking eyes and look at what I'm presenting to you. You're, you're the simple-minded prick that comes in here just to start shit. Because you got nothing better to do. What are you, a 40-year-old jerking off in his mother's basement? You got nothing better to do? So you come in here to bust my balls? Like, it's ridiculous. It's ridiculous. Don't come in here and make shit up. I just showed the evidence. Once again, just to prove this guy's a fucking idiot. Because I get tired of this nonsense. Like, if you're just going to, like, make shit up, like, get the fuck out of here already. Okay, right here, what I'm about to show you was what the FBI, this is from Chief of Police, Chief Donnelly. This is what, these are his notes on what they were looking for because they were investigating a murder for fucking hire. Did I write that on my computer? You're right, because I know all about thallium. Look, Lazar said after an email communication with her, she shipped it to him. Lazar was only able to provide copies of email conversations with the woman. Sometime in March 2017, shortly after receiving the elements, he posted and offered them for sale on his website. What happened was someone bought thallium and killed someone else. They poisoned them. And because thallium is a highly restricted chemical, you fucking idiot, the FBI got involved because when they did an autopsy, they found thallium. Well, how could they get this? This is not something. And guess what? They trace emails. They find out. And this is what brought them to Lazar. You're an idiot. You are an absolute fucking idiot. And the fact that you got 50 cent is your fucking picture tells me you're a fucking nobody because you got to put a picture of another fucking man you want to be because you can't be a man. So go fuck yourself. Goodbye. Sorry. I just get tired of people like coming in here, like making shit up because he came in here two minutes after like I started saying, oh, he's saying Bob Lazar is a liar. I never said that. But this is what trolls do. And that's why uh, you just throw people out of here. Uh Listen, I've been uh, very honest about my life. I've been very honest about other people. I don't trust the feds in anything they fucking say. If anything, how many times did I not say? Just because the feds say so doesn't make it so. It's like stupid. Anyway, moving right along. The guy's a loser. We're just going to move on. Sorry about that, guys. I just get tired of people coming in here lying. I just don't like it. Uh, let's see. Kane had a big collection of men's magazines. He definitely did. He definitely did. Definitely did. Uh, okay. Uh, I'm not going to talk about organized crime on this show. Uh, as you guys know, I run Mob Talk Radio, and we will be doing a live on Mob Talk Radio. I just try not to. Uh, I try not to put the two together uh, at all. Uh, but anyway, so for those that are listening, I apologize and go on that little rant. I have to learn to ignore idiots. Uh, but it just comes down to a basic premise that people will come in here and just start lying. And, and if he doesn't think I know who he is, he's wrong. So I know who that was. So anyway, moving right along. Uh, let's see. All right. So it's 1038. I'm going to go for another five minutes or so, guys, because I, I want to keep this under two hours. Um, but we can keep uh, don't fuss with idiots who can't spell idiot. Yeah, I know. I know. It just gets so old. Like, you know, he was going to keep pushing until I said something and I knew it. I should have just gotten rid of him. Anyway, you live, you learn. Um, what if UFOs are elite or the elite, uh, elite from the future? That's a good question. I see. Here's the thing. I don't know. So it kind of like goes with Bigfoot, right? The Bigfoot territory. I'm the kind of guy where I got to see it to know it exists. Uh, so for me, like uh, taste, touch, sight, sound. It, it, listen, you put me in the woods and a big hairy ape comes running by me, I'm going to believe the rest of my life. Uh, or unless you could so show me DNA that, that certifiably proves it. I'm sort of on the same thing with aliens. Unless I see a spaceship myself, I just don't know if I, I buy that that's completely what it is. Uh, do I want to get kidnapped by them? No, because I'm afraid they're going to probe me. I, I really particularly don't uh, want that to happen. But you know, we've been seeing these things. It, these things go back to the Egyptian days. Uh, <laughs> sorry, I'm laughing. I just saw this. This is funny. Yeah, we can add that too. Yeah. Um, 
but Egyptians, uh, even going so far uh, to, oh God, it, it, just Indians in general, Native Americans, you go in some of these old caves and they've got paintings of things that look like aliens with the big heads, you know, the typical grays. So I'm just not sure. I'm just not sure. I don't see that's kind of like the thing, right? Like I think on one hand, okay, obviously, you know, we're an intelligent species. We have the ability. I mean, come on, we built the submarine. We can breathe underwater with scuba. We can, there's all of these things we can do, but are we that advanced in this country? Are we that advanced? We can't cure cancer, but we can build a UFO. Like, and don't get me started on the whole thing with cancer because I know what some of you are going to say, and I'll just say it for you. We can we can cure cancer. We just don't want to. That's just the truth. Uh, but if our country and our civilization is that advanced, then imagine the things like this whole thing that's going on in the Ukraine right now. Let's just give them one of these cloaked things and let them have a field day with Putin's army. You know what I mean? So that's So it's like I don't know if we're that advanced or not. I really just don't know. But but I also think, and, and I acknowledge this, that I also think that it would be very silly for me to think that we're not that advanced either. You know, exactly. There is no money in a cure. There is none. None. Good point here. Squids are really smart too, and they look very alien to us. And they're nasty too. They are nasty. You imagine being attacked by one of them fucking things with that beak they have? Oh my God. I think Bigfoots could be tracked by now with all the technology. Well, Nazbol, you should go and listen to the Bigfoot show I did. And you should see the videos we posted. We've got some interesting stuff there. This is the one thing that I always attempt to do. Anything that I'm covering, my opinion of whatever topic it is <coughs> doesn't really matter. It doesn't matter what my opinion is. The whole point is I'm going to bring you two sides of the story. And I'm going to let you figure it out because ultimately it's about conversation. It's about opening up, you know, a, a dialogue into to, to what you think, what you believe. And nobody's right. And nobody's wrong. It's just conversation. So like for the Loch Ness, people are thinking, oh, this idiot's going to talk about the Loch Ness monster. It's stupid, blah, blah, blah. But what was hilarious about that was, is I knew that I had a video nobody had ever seen. And I knew as long as I could keep you guys in this chat room for an hour and 20 minutes that last eight minutes of the show with the video was going to make it worth it. And what was hilarious to me is everybody is in the chat going, show the video, show the video. When I did, everybody was like, all I see is, oh, my God, what the fuck? Oh, my God, what the fuck? Oh, my God, what the fuck? And that's what it's about for me. It's about giving you entertainment, allowing you to experience something and doing the work for you. That way you don't have to go search anything. I'll do it all for you. Just come in and come to chill and have a good time. That's it. Uh, you think mob junkie fans are crazy? The ones in the sailing conspiracy. Oh, no, no, no. T Dover Dan. <laughs> Let me tell you something. I've been getting emails from a guy that, that's been telling me for months he was abducted by aliens. Okay. Uh, he has not stopped emailing me. And these stories are either the funniest made up shit I've ever seen in my life. Or this guy certifiably has been places I can never experience because they're insane, but I haven't read them yet because the problem is, is that A, you don't know who you're dealing with. That's number one. Number two, I'm not saying that what he's experienced is not real, but the last thing I ever want to do is embarrass somebody like that by reading something like, first of all, if it's a lie, the joke's on me anyway. But if it's somebody that truly had an experience, I do not want to embarrass them like that. I don't, I don't think that's fair. Uh, you know, at least without the guy saying, please read these. If he says, please read these, boy, are we going to have a field day? But, you know, yes, we don't probe. We don't cure cancer. The government uses it against us to control population. Absolutely. Uh, love, uh, let's see, love to show, love to contact, keep it coming. Yep, that's what we try to do over here. I think it's also safe to say that super wealthy enjoy a much better class of medical health than we do. No, Absolutely. Absolutely. Uh, every human has fucked up thoughts, some more than others, and some act on them, and some don't. Gain acted on his fucked up thoughts. And can you imagine the ones he didn't act on? That's even deeper and more fucked up, Chris, than anything. Think about the thoughts he had that he didn't act on. Those are the ones I wish I knew about. You know? Like, those are the ones that are really creepy. 
Uh, anybody can rob a liquor store, but who has it in them to become gain? Well, and that's an interesting uh, sort of topic. I'm going to go for 15 more minutes, guys. We're going to go right to 11 o'clock. Uh, here's what I can say about that. I think each and every one of us is capable of murder. We're humans. We're animals. People forget we're mammals. Okay, just because we're an evolved, we, humans seem to think that they are the most evolved species on earth, but yet we're the only people who kill somebody over their sexual tastes, or we're the only uh, sort of group that kills each other over a belief in God. You don't see an alligator whacking another alligator because he doesn't believe in the alligator God, and they're human beings. You don't see chimpanzees. Well, chimps are a little different because they'll kill each other over certain other shit, but we're the only species that does this. We're the only species, so we're not some highly evolved species that deserves more credibility than other things. That's just the God's honest truth, and I'm sorry if that hurts somebody's feelings, but that's the truth. Like, we put ourselves on this scale. Like, when somebody says, oh, he killed a dog, so what? It's just a dog. Well, I see, I think, and, and this is my thing, like, hunting, right? There's people that use, uh, people that are hunters that kill to eat. Then there's these people that kill for, for sport and trophy or whatever. So humans say, well, this area is overpopulated, so you can it's okay to kill them. Well, I think the world's overpopulated. I'm going to start killing people. How quick do you think that's going to work for me? And see, that's the problem. Humans put themselves above everything else. And so if there is an alien, and this was my point, if there are aliens, how eager do you think they are to sit down with us? Look at him. He's buying Tic Tacs on a credit card again, Bob. That fucking we're not probing him tonight. You know, I mean, that's just sort of my point. <laughs> uh, Loch Ness is pretty interesting. We have a similar myth in a huge lake in Norway. There are also other places with similar stories to similar creatures. I am getting into, believe it or not, Viking history for some reason. I don't know what it is, but I've been getting into uh, Norse mythology lately and some other things. Uh, but if you have not watched the Loch Ness episode, trust me, the last eight minutes is worth it. Trust me. Can you get somebody that was abducted to come on the show so we can get a time traveler to come out? You listen, buddy. And I'm not going to call. I almost called you by your name, Mozzarella Boss. Uh, listen, if if I could get on somebody here that I thought people in the chat would respect and, and, and be nice to, I would, but the problem with the other show that I do is we kind of get nuts coming into the woodwork. So anybody that I have on uh, is going to have to, uh, I'm going to have to pre-record because I just can't let anybody come in and abuse them for the for the point of um, doing it. Oh, look. All right. So we've got another one. He's gone. We're not even going to let that in. Look, if you're, if you're going to come in here and make another name, just come in here and fight with people, you can get lost. Simple as that. Uh, can we just go to midnight? No, we can't, mozzarella boss. You know why we can't go to midnight? I'll tell you the truth if you want to know. The reason why I can't go to midnight is because I am going to have to get up tomorrow and work on mob talk radio stuff. I would like a day off. And I talk to you every day, mozzarella boss. You know this. Uh, if I had 100 people in here or 20 people wanting to come on, that would be different. I do not think that is Lee. I do not, Pasha, I do not think that's Lee. No, I don't think that's Lee. I got to be honest. Um, I don't think that's him. I don't think he would do that. He wouldn't come in here and do that, especially when he knows I can trace ISPs. I don't think he would do that. I really don't. Uh, but I don't know what your, uh, I do not know what your relationship with Lee Cole is, but Lee's all right. Lee's an all right guy. Uh, let's see. See, I can say something nice about people. Uh, are we going to do any shows in the paranormals? Yes, we have done a couple of shows, but here's the um, here's the thing I have with paranormal. And maybe you guys can help me out with this because really it's about you guys. I personally feel like if I talk to you about the 10 most haunted places, it's kind of boring. You know what I mean? Like, would you guys want to do something like that? Because I try to give you something that, first of all, it has to sort of inspire me, number one. Number two, it has to, to pique my interest. It has to make me go, wow. This is crazy. I can't believe this. Uh, and at the same time, I uh, the reason why we took two and a half, almost three weeks off the show is I was really struggling with coming up with a content idea uh, because I like to do stuff that's exciting and it, it, it makes you sort of come out of your box a little bit and have to, to think about other things. Uh, but I would love to talk about... Um, um, 
Oh, for Christ's sakes. Anyway, uh, I would love to talk about uh, hauntings and the paranormal and stuff like that. So we can get into that. I just never know what you guys uh, really uh, want to do. It's This is your show. It's not mine. You guys think it's mine. It's not. We love shows on demons and exorcisms. And you love shows on regatta racing boats, too, you prick. <laughs> uh, yeah, absolutely. I Listen, I'm not, I, I would not consider myself an expert on Norse mythology whatsoever. I really wouldn't. I'm just learning about stuff. I don't know what it is about the Viking culture that uh, has me sort of uh, drawn to it. But that's kind of one of the things that I'm, I'm looking at now, absolutely. Oh, okay. Gotcha. Well, just uh, just got to work. Great show as usual. Well, enjoy enjoy work, Frank. Enjoy work. Uh, this has been an awesome show tonight. Great job. Well, thanks, Mozzarella Boss. I try. You know, I'm wearing a Mozzarella Boss hat. I would show you guys, but then you'd see my face, and then the secret would be out that I'm an alien. <laughs> hey, listen, for those that are going to ask, I'm going to start showing my face. It has the only reason why I don't is because I have certain things in my house I don't want people to see. I don't have like Nazi flags or crazy shit like that, but I have some very expensive stuff. And I just don't, I would, I, I need to situate this in a way where I can turn my office around the other direction. That's all. Just for privacy reasons. Just for privacy reasons. Uh, abandoned, abandoned haunted psych hospitals. That's a good idea too. Uh, old hats, old news. I don't care anymore. Let's see. I wish I had the money to go sailing at the regatta this weekend. Yeah, Chris is busting my balls because my, uh, my, my, I would say my former, but, uh, but my uncle has a really funny way of saying regatta. He goes, I'm going sailing in the regatta. I'm going sailing in the regatta. Do not kick rocks into the lake because I'm going sailing on the regatta. Real prick. Real prick. Real, real prick. Uh, you should see this necklace I have from old Norse times. Really looks like a gray alien with a Viking. Wow. That's cool. Well, Pasha, I'm glad to see you here. I've seen you in other chats. Um, I have uh, abstained from going in anybody's chat room ever again. Uh, and I, to be perfectly honest with you, don't watch anybody's show. I admit I watched Lee, Lee Cole's show today. I did watch some of his stuff. Uh, but for the most part, I don't watch any of this drama shit that's on YouTube. I just don't have time for it. And I don't give a shit about anybody that does it either. Aha. Uh -huh. How did you know, Stephen? How did you know that? Ah, you must be following me on Netflix. No, uh, that is a part of it. But there was some other stuff. There was some other stuff, too. Uh, mainly, I just, the, the, the people from Norway and Sweden are fucking massive. They're humongous people. I just don't, where do they get that huge height from? They get that Viking height and the Viking build. They're just big people in general. Look at all those uh, world's strongest man contests. They're all fucking Vikings. <laughs> uh, I swear to God, I saw a real alien on another content creator show recently. I'll leave it at that. Well, you know what? I might've seen the same one. I think I saw the same one you did. He's got beady little fucking eyes. They go in two different directions. I know who you're talking about, Chris. I know who you're talking about. Uh, he's from the ancient Kurgan tribes. He, he, he. Let me see if I can. I don't know if you guys will actually be able to hear this. Hold on one second. Uh, I'm looking at something really quick. Hold on one. Can you actually hear this? Take me to your leader. There you go. There you go. So, yeah, in the future, uh, we are going to be doing stuff live. You'll be able to see my face. I hope that you people will start coming on this show. See, let me explain for those of you that are here and those of you that are new. Uh, we want this to really become something that we do like every single Friday night from like 9 to like 12 or from like 12 to 3 a.m. And we bring all of the fucking tinfoil hat on people on. Now, none of you are tinfoil hat people. But we want to bring on the tinfoil hat people that are going to say the crazy wild shit. If you guys have ever listened to Coast to Coast with George Norrie or Art Bell and, and any of that, that's what we want to do with this. The thing is, is that I don't really need a co-host. I need uh, 
a surrounding panel of enlightened people like Pasha, Chris Gorky, a mozzarella boss, guys like this. I need people like you to come on the show constantly to talk about crazy, wild ideas. And so the first 45 minutes of every show is going to be a topic. And then we're going to open it up and we're going to let all of the tinfoil hat people come on and just, I once got molested by a werewolf or just something crazy like that. Cause to me, that's where the entertainment value is. Honest to God, I'm really not entertaining. I'm sitting here just talking like a general person. And one of the things I always try to do is I try to talk to each and every single one of you like you're sitting next to me. Or if we're sitting in a diner at 3 o'clock in the morning, have you ever had that great conversation at 3 o'clock in the morning with some friends? You're drinking coffee. Maybe you went out drinking half the night. You're just having this great conversation. You're like, wow, this is a great conversation. To me, that's what every podcast should be. It should be me. And all of you sitting together at a table, but yet you feel like I'm only talking to you. That's how this works. That's the trick. And so that's what I want to do. Uh, that's what I want to do. And so I want to do these more frequently. Uh, oh, geez. <laughs> um, you have to be stronger and smarter to beat Mother Nature in four foot of snow and ice. No, absolutely. Absolutely. Uh I will definitely keep my eyes open for the next stream. Really nice stream. Nice people. Yeah, thank you for coming. And I, I really do appreciate you hanging out with us. And uh, sorry you saw the snarkier side of me. I just get tired of people sometimes. Uh, uh oh. Let's see, guys. Let's agree to all go on next weekend. What do you say? Pasha Mozzarella. And yeah, I don't think I, I don't think Mott's man is gonna do that. I don't think he will. <clears throat> but no, I mean, I would like to have a panel of different people every week. You know, because, you know, you guys are like kind of talking in the chat and I'm just as I'm going, picking up different ideas and stuff to talk about. But what I would like to do is do like 45 minutes of a topic and then say, OK, guys, here's the topic for the next 45 minutes. We're talking about ghosts and then like people like agnostic and other people like that come on and, and discuss hauntings and ghost stories and stuff like that, because it's all about I'm just a host. You guys are the storytellers. That's how this works. Uh, you know, and that's what I would like to do. But unfortunately, uh, I think because I don't do drama, there's a lot of reasons why people stay away from my channel because I don't do drama. But if I wanted to do it, believe me, uh, but we have over 18,400 uh, subscribed on this channel and over on mob talk radio on our private podcast, forget about how many we got, but, uh, Laugh my ass off. Molested, uh, molested my wife. I, I spied the werewolf. There you go. There you go. Uh oh, Posh is going to get liquored up first. Oh, you got to do, you got to do what you got to do. But that's the thing. If I can just get people to come on here and we can build like a rapport, this is all I want to do. I don't want to have the whole shout fest. Let's just talk about crazy, creepy shit. Maybe you guys have a story when you was a kid walking in the woods with your friends, you saw something weird, or I, who knows. You know, but everybody's got stories and that's what I want is stories. I don't necessarily want the aliens abducted me and opened my asshole 16 inches and inserted a bowling ball. I really don't necessarily want that to hear that, but everybody's got stories uh, and bringing people on and let them express sort of their beliefs. And, and it would have been great to have a panel of 10 people on tonight talking about Bob Lazar and what they believe in aliens and, you know, leading it on to here. But unfortunately, either what I do is not very popular or I'm not doing it enough. I just don't really know. Uh, I talk massive shit though. Just I listen, Pasha. I have seen you on shows. I'm well aware of who you are. I'm well aware. Chukacabra attacks. That's right. That's right. But there's all sorts of things from cryptids to ghosts to hauntings to serial killings to disappearances. If you guys are interested in disappearances, we covered a whole bunch of disappearance stuff. All you got to do is head over to our station, which you're on now. Uh, go down to uh, uh, playlists and you'll see a hockey playlist where I talk a little hockey. You'll see mob talk radio, and then you'll see tales of the night horror podcast and just click one of those playlists and just go down and listen. I don't listen to my own self. Unfortunately, I kind of, I kind of bore myself, uh, but I would love to start doing this once a week and just get all kinds of people coming in talking to me. It would be so much better than some of the, the garbage that is out there now. It's just me. It's just me. Julian Sands is still dead. Yes, absolutely. 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 
Yeah, everybody can tell their craziest stories ever. Yeah, I mean, I'm a, listen, I'm up for anybody talking about whatever they want to talk about. That's what this show is. It's it's the, the parameters are just very loose. We're not going to talk organized crime because I do that on another show. We're going to talk everything horror from your favorite horror movies, your favorite horror actor, your favorite horror scene, your favorite horror book uh, to ghosts, goblins, demons, exorcisms, disappearances, serial killings, uh, kidnappings, everything that makes you go, ooh, what the fuck was that? That's my thing. If you're like me, and you've seen a horror movie 20, 30, 40 times. Like, and I'll give you a good reference point. The Silver Bullet, one of my favorite movies ever because I'm a werewolf freak. I love werewolves, right? Every time in that film, when the guy watching wrestling is sitting in his house and he's trying to open the can of beer and he's cheering on the wrestling, kick him in the ass, and he hears a noise coming out from his little shed. You and I already know He's going out to that shed, and it's just a matter of time before the werewolf's going to fucking kill him. And every time I say the same shit, don't go in there. You don't want to go in there. He never listens, and there he goes. And that's just kind of how it goes. Can we just plan some expedition to go search for some buried money in the Pine Barrens? Listen, mozzarella boss, you're a funny guy. I think you're going to find a lot more in the Pine Barrens than money. I got to be honest with you. I think you're going to find bodies, you know? Uh, I've been a bus driver for over 20 years, and one night during a round, I saw a sphere of flame coming out of. Sorry, I cut off. Kubrick's version of The Shining is better than King's novel. There, I said it. I don't think anybody's going to disagree with you. Uh, let's see. The alligator people from Florida. Well, you've got the skunk ape. Uh, there's all kinds of stuff. You know, honestly, people, if somebody asked me the other day, so what's your favorite horror episode you've done? Well, I've only done like, what, six or seven now? The favorite one was the Loch Ness. And you know why it was? It was not the easiest thing in the world to do. My favorite part was the last eight minutes because I knew, I knew that I was going to draw people in and they were going to be like, oh, you're going to so show some dumb fucking rinky fucking video nobody wants to fucking watch. And then as soon as I hit that play button, everybody went, what the fuck? And I'm like, yes, that's what I'm talking about. That's what I want to do. That's what I get joy from, you know? I would bring it up just to show it to you here, but I don't. I would want you to go over and watch the whole show. Uh, every year we can help do the Annabelle Marathon. Yeah, absolutely. I want to know where Sammy Hagar can't drive 55. <laughs> uh, let's see, Chandler and Tyler, the alligator people from Florida. Let's go find Dutch Schultz's treasure in Phoenicia, New York. Well, it's funny you mention that, Pasha, because I am going to be heading that direction for a very interesting show that is not going to be your typical mob talk radio show. Uh, I'm waiting till the spring and I'm going to Phoenicia and we are going to do a whole entire show up there. It's going to be fantastic. I can't wait. And you're going to see the tunnels. Aha. So Pasha, you can ride along if you want, even though I think what you're in Alabama. I heard about this native tribe that talked about serpent people from the skies who called them the snake brothers. Not sure what tribe though. It was a long time since I heard about it. Nope. I heard something similar. And that's the kind of stuff I want to talk about. I'm not just looking for the traditional, oh, we're going to talk about the, the fucking New Jersey devil. Oh, we're going to talk about the, the Mothman. Or, or I want to find shit that just is odd. Because I find that the odder it is, the more, seem, the, the more facts seem to substantiate stuff like that. I heard Joey Dracula buried his famous marinara recipe in the back of the Gemini. Yeah, along with a lot of people. Uh, let's say uh, Dolce, New Mexico, Dutch farms. Another funny myth I heard about with Native Americans, the one of the tribes had the savior figure called Lone Man. And this story is really similar to Jesus controlling water and healing people. Well, it's interesting that you say that because religion's universal. Everybody kind of, really at the end of the day, everybody believes in the same shit, Right. Uh, the basic principles. It's just when you get into real organized, that's where the stories kind of seem to differ. Uh, you know. All right. Four more minutes, guys, and I got to get out of here because I've got to get up and work tomorrow on more content. Uh, do any of you have any suggestions of what you want the show to be or what you would like to hear about or 
whether or not you hate the show or not. I, I never seem to get a ton of feedback. You know, now see, the thing is, I look at it, it says 52 people in here, right? Uh, I'll get off of here and it'll show like 500 views. Because a lot of people don't want to do the chat because uh, people scream and shit. You know what I mean? Well, you are certainly welcome to go. Roll Tide. Oh, boy. Do you know that I once, oh, my God, where, where, uh, Oh, geez. I was there. I was in Alabama once in my life. UVA. I was playing Auburn. And let me tell you something about Alabama people. They love their football. Holy shit, do they love their football. <laughs> in Alabama, that place was hot. Not only did they have fucking fire ants, which I didn't know existed, but that fucking Alabama's hot as fuck. <laughs> I mean, you don't understand the heat that comes out of Alabama. But I had a good time. I got real drunk there, I'll tell you that much. Alabama people were nice, very nice people. But don't fuck with the football. <laughs> That's just kind of how it works. Uh, let's see. We probably should analyze Bigfoot versus the Yeti and Abdominable Snowman. How is it that the creature? Well, and this is this is this is why I love you, Mozzarella Boss, because literally sitting over here on the right hand side, I wrote down at some point it might be advisable to talk about the differences. Uh, of Bigfoot, the Yeti, and the Snowman. What are the differences, and why are all of these stories similar? And are they even related, uh, biologically speaking? So it's something that I was thinking about, <coughs> but realistically, uh, I didn't think that people really wanted to hear about Bigfoot. I was shocked when I got attacked by all these Bigfoot truthers. Oh, my God. Uh, I think I got an email that somebody said, I hope Bigfoot rapes you in your sleep. I'm like, Jesus, you guys are brutal. All right, Donald, take it easy, my buddy. Uh, American World from London. That is one of my favorites. One of my all-time favorites. Uh, I like uh, Frankenstein versus the Wolfman, mainly because of the opening scene. One of the opening scene is just fantastic because it's scary. It's creepy because they're breaking into the grave. Lawrence Talbot's buried there. They're checking to make sure he... It's just... I don't know. It's just fantastic. 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 Yep, I, I technically I would agree with you. I'd also think that George Welsh was one of the greatest football coaches ever, too. Just my opinion. Pasha, I'll send you a you your very bottle of liquor if you come live next week. Oh God. Look at look at Chris Gorky playing it. Playing it. Anyway, uh listen, the only thing I ever request, the donations are great. I never ask for money. Uh, the only thing that I ever ask that you do for me is just share the show and tell a friend because the more people we can get coming in here, the better the show is going to be uh, and the more confident I'll feel about continuing to do the horror stuff uh, because sometimes I feel like, eh, you know what, the mob stuff I do is fantastic. Nobody can really surpass me at that. Uh, but sometimes I worry that this is too much of a boring topic. So like Chris Gorky will tell you, I'll text him after I get off and go, was that okay? And he'll be, he'll be like, yeah, it was good. What the fuck are you worried about? Uh, but that's just the way it is. That's just the way it is. Uh-oh. You got a deal, Chris. Hell, I'll even go get it. Pasha Morris. I'm Southern. We don't turn down liquor. Shit. <laughs> oh, you guys are hilarious. Anyway, please do me a solid and just merely tell a friend about the show. Ask them to subscribe. And I promise you, we will try to do this once a week. It's a lot for me because I do a lot of other projects. I got a lot of the stuff in production. But the more you guys show up, the more you engage with me, the more I'm going to want to do it. So we will try next Friday. Mark it down. Next Friday, 9 o'clock p.m., same time, same bat channel, all that shit. And we'll do that. Uh-oh, uh -oh, let's see. I'm not playing it. Pasha said she needs a... Okay. Yes, I know. I, I'm just busting balls, Chris. Don't get excited. Don't get excited. Uh, good evening, Jeff. Just got home from work. Can't wait to listen to this. Bob Lazar is great. Have a great weekend. Thank you. Sorry you're a little late, but you can always just please, guys, whatever you do for me. First of all, you can reach out to me at you, if you want at mobtalkradioshow at gmail.com. That's how you can get a hold of me. Uh and just simply share the show. That's all I ask that you do. And if you guys have any ideas, reach out to me at mobtalkradioshow at gmail.com. Also, you can go to Facebook and you can type in Tales of the Night Horror Podcast. We have a Facebook page. So 
Uh, we also have an Instagram page as well. Uh, in the meantime, uh, if you guys are into the mob content, I got something dropping tomorrow for that. That it will be on YouTube only. Uh, but we will do this next Friday at 9 o'clock p.m. And Pasha, I'm holding you to it. You better be here. So if you guys love the show, do me a favor. I'm not a bitch. I'm not a pansy. But it would be nice to hear you like the show. So reach out to me at mob, M-O-B-T-A-L-K, radio show at gmail.com. And if you have any suggestions, any critiques, any ideas, or you just want to say hello, reach out to the show that way. You know, let me know. Hey, I listen to the horror show. It's great. Here's a great idea. I think you should cover this. Hey, I want to come on and talk about this. It's fine. It's fine. Uh, oh, Lord. Here we go. Pasha's not messing around. She's getting right to the point. <laughs> That's what I like about Southern women. You know what I mean? Straight to the point. Don't fuck around. Anyway, uh, thank you all for being here. Uh, and just share the show. And listen, if anybody wants to talk and chill or whatever, uh, mob talk radio show at gmail.com. Uh, on behalf of myself and the ghosts that are in my apartment and everybody else, have a great weekend. And we will see everybody next Friday. Nine. Yeah.